Oh my goodness, what is going on? You are watching and of course listening to Tags Live, aka Talk About Gay Sex, the live edition where we are here every Wednesday night on the Crowdcast platform. I am your host, Steve V. This is episode 545 alongside Back in Business with Cody Maurice Dolgat. How the hell are you doing, Cody? Hello, darling. I'm doing wonderful. I'm feeling fresh and fancy free this evening. Let's go. Let's go. So much to talk about on this episode. And we are live in front of a virtual audience. Thank you so much for joining us. We will get to many of your questions, concerns, and alarms through this hour episode. And we thank you for joining us. Okay, well, I couldn't help but talk a little bit more about my Vakaya cruise to the Caribbean that I just wrapped up. And I needed to also shout out to DJ Dawson. Do you know DJ Dawson here in New York, Cody? He yes, is a, I do. Yes, I, uh, he, oh my gosh, he spun three parties on the cruise and amazing music and i got to i've known justin or dawson dj dawson for years and it was just great to hang out with him a little bit and get to know him a little bit better and that was so much fun also uh thank you so much we've been shouting out to will of tantric fitness and he has really become like my brother that i didn't oh, know i Eddie. yeah Maybe we both went uncle. to well, let's not get crazy. <laughs> <laughs> but he's been a guest on our show and we really got close. I'm going to see him in LA next week. I can't wait. And he has given me so much information on my OnlyFans. So vital information that I'm so excited to put forth. And I just feel like I have this new brother and I'm so excited about it. And we will see more to come on that. Okay, like I said, we're in front of a studio virtual audience and we need to just start off with a very sad story. The bodies of Jesse in Australia, Jesse Baird is a presenter. He did a lot of red carpet. He did a lot of news stories and he was on his way to become really far more in the journalism world, the entertainment world. Jesse Baird is his name and his boyfriend, sadly, were missing from last week. His boyfriend was Luke Davies and the two of them went missing and they were at Jesse's house. Well, sadly, we have to report on this, that they found the bodies of both Jesse and his boyfriend and they sadly are not with us anymore. And on Monday, Jesse and his boyfriend were reported missing after neighbors reported hearing arguments at their house. But it turns out it was Jesse's ex-boyfriend, Constable Bo Lamare Condon, who actually was stalking Jesse and keyed his car and went to, he was a police officer, if you can believe it, Constable, and was stalking Jesse while he went to Jesse's house with the intention, authorities believe, to murder Jesse. But actually, Luke, sadly, also was murdered as well. And the bodies were found in the backyard, or actually in body bags, surfer body bags, if you will. They're, they're okay. made for surfboards. They're not even body bags. He made them body bags. And they were in the backyard. Jesse had roommates, and in the morning, a constable took the bodies and to another undisclosed location. He has since turned him, himself in. Our hearts really go out to Jesse and Luke's families and friends, because you can just imagine they were so in love. But it also brings up, how did the ex become a police officer? Because in more research, I was deep diving earlier this morning on the story, and Constable was actually doing a lot of uh, view for pay, like pay per view. I'll show you this, which I don't know that that's against, you know, being a police officer or not. But he was also posting some very 
uh, interesting po postings on his social media. So he would be on a jet plane. He was at a private island. He had like a Birkin bag in another photo. Very extravagant, over the top photos, which again, not a crime, but yeah. it does bring up the point where there and there was a, a third story where in he was actually tasing a, a potential a, a criminal and over tased the guy so oh, the guy wow. was yeah and he was being investigated for that i don't know again i think really our love and prayers are for the families of jesse baird and luke davies but do you i mean hearing this story what are your thoughts cody yeah, it's really unfortunate. And like you stated, but I feel like I should state as well, my heart goes out to the family and the friends of the, of the deceased. It's such a an, a wild story. I can't even wrap my head around what would provoke somebody to, to want to do these types of actions to anyone, let alone somebody that they profess to love. So I think that this is super unfortunate. Um, it looks to me like this man had some serious mental health issues and in Australia, I read, because I did a little deep dive too, because this story is so captivating. It will really just kind of suck you in. So it's, uh, but in Australia, they do, they do mental health checks as far as in order to become a police officer. And they are going to be going over his, the answers to his, his test as far as him becoming an actual police officer to, to, discern where they may have made a mistake as far as allowing him to be a police officer because he allegedly he killed the the couple with his police gun which i think is very insane i cannot believe that this and then he turned the police gun in back into the police and it's it's just a horrendous act and i hope this man gets what's coming to him yeah he turned himself in at the end and admitted to doing what he did it's just at what point are authorities not, you know, he's supposed to be protecting, not the opposite yeah. and not taking his personal vendetta against an ex-boyfriend out, not only on the ex, but on the ex's boyfriend. And so more, re more investigation, of course, needs to be done, but it's, it's in any way you toss it up, it's, it's very sad and, yeah. You know, Jesse and Luke were in love and had so much going for them. They were just on a path and it's just, it's very sad. And, you know, I hope we get down to, like you said, some answers to this because mm -hmm. we can't keep blaming everything on mental health. That's true. When it comes to people's lives. I agree completely with that because that is such, I hear it over and over again. And I'm like, at what point do we have to have people take accountability? And I feel like that's going to come up again, but I'm saying it here right now. Yes. Okay. Well, you know, moving on, um, we are pivoting here to Billy D. Williams, Star Ooh. Wars actor, Mahogany, Cody. I know you're a big fan. <laughs> Why are we talking about 86 year old Billy D. Williams? Well, he has a new memoir that just came out and he is really being honest in it. It's called The Man and the Artist and really amazing. I actually kind of want to read it now. I've always loved Billy D. Williams. I know we'll oh. get to how you feel about him. <laughs> and at 86, my goodness, we should all be so lucky to look and be so sexy as he he was on the view the other day cody and looking very fine really Ooh. well why are we talking about billy d williams besides cody Daddy loving billy. him well he's been quoted as saying quote i've been called the closet queen his words but i don't pay much attention to any of that he said about the gay rumors that could have affected his career back in the day um not to mention also he shared he hung out with a lot of our community. And what did he have to say on that? It all seemed very normal to me. I was around it all of my life. So I never really gave it much thought. And then as an actor, you know, wardrobe department, makeup, many other areas, of course, the 70s, need we say any more? And the other very cool factor that I think worth mentioning, quote, I was talking about why men should get more in touch with the female side of themselves. 
And then my daughter told me the first time I ever heard the phrase gender fluid. My daughter was very happy to think that I was gender fluid. And so much like, could Billy D. Williams at 86 be any cooler than, right. I mean, come on, as a black man, a black actor, what? I just, I'm like, okay, Billy D. Like, <laughs> like we need to salute. What are your thoughts? Yeah, I, I love me some Billy D. Landau Calrissian, amazing. He was in Mahogany uh, and the Colt 45 commercials. I still have them in, in, ingrained in my brain because he is just, he's an icon. And I, I was telling you offline, I was actually walking past a bar in, in Brooklyn the other day and I saw this cardboard cutout of Billy Day Williams in the window. And I took the time to stop because he's, he is an immaculate man. And I took a picture and I posted on Instagram and I, I just love him. And I, I can't believe that he is such, uh, so his thoughts are so progressive right now, because I think that at 86, you would think that somebody is more closed off, but it, it right. really is very telling that he is so open and he has so many progressive views about the world. And it can only benefit the black community because he is such an icon and the community in general, because him expressing these views are going to open up hearts and minds and make people kind of take good hard look at what they are, what is really, what it means to them to be a, a human being in this world. So I, I really applaud Billy Dee Williams for, for doing the fighting the good fight. Love it. A hundred percent agree. Um, you go, Billy. I need that memoir and. What a shining example, well stated, Cody. Okay, staying in Hollywood news, Andy Cohen is coming under fire, this time with a lawsuit. And he's kind of been under fire recently, Cody. If you notice, there's some Hulu specials, like with Bethany Frankel, that not just Bethany and not just Andy, but they're questioning reality TV and what is it really doing? What is it really asking of its performers? from many from a mental standpoint and what is it putting them through i have some thoughts about it but in the current lawsuit that is filed against him it's real housewife star leah mcsweeney she was on a previous new york housewives series with the show and she's saying andy cohen and bravo uh, uh, she alleges that they promoted alcohol and drug use she has suffered from alcoholism and, and and said that it has triggered her. She went on the Today Show earlier talking about this, and or maybe ABC, not, not the Today, Good Morning America. And she has said that she has also said that Andy has done cocaine with many of the housewives before, and that the, the show promotes alcohol alcohol and it's contributed to her demise and that's why she's has mm. this whole thing i mean there's a lot to unpack here now the whole thing about oh, the sure. cocaine thing and nobody knows that and nobody can really state if if that were true of course mm -hmm. that would be wrong <laughs> and that she never said it was in her she said that some housewives and andy have partaked in that that would be wrong on many levels but beyond that the if you were cody struggling with alcoholism and you know on our show here we've been very forthright about doing drinking alcohol when we do the show we record this show at night <laughs> and mine is coffee right and we drink alcohol <laughs> because it's a late night show and we're talking about sexuality and, you know, somebody could say if one of our hosts, and we've gone through many hosts throughout the years, we're about to celebrate seven years, but if somebody came to me and said, you know, I'm not comfortable with that, or, you know, they also don't have to, I've never, you've never, we've never pushed alcohol. Sometimes we'll do it in our studio setup over here, but it's not, you have to do it. It's there if you want it. And I exactly. suspect it's the same thing with the housewives as well. They're going to parties. They're 
partaking in this, but there's plenty of housewives that are sober. I'm just f finishing up the the final season of Beverly Hills, and one of the main storylines, Kyle Richards, and hers is the most salacious storyline. She's actually sober all season, and she has the wow. number one storyline of the whole season. So it is not needed for a hot storyline, and. I also just think like it's interesting how all these people are coming out of the woodworks to accuse Andy of I'm not saying I'm not on Andy's side. I just think that it's you know, you got to look out for yourself. What are your thoughts? Oh, yeah, I definitely see your point of view and your perspective, but I'm kind of two minds here. One part of me thinks it's completely unconscionable to take advantage of someone's disorders. But the other part of me is kind of on your side because I feel like where is the personal accountability for all of this? She knows what reality TV is, what type of beast it is, and she knows that it's stressful, that it could be triggering, that there is alcohol on set. And I think that that should be taken into account when these things are being discussed. Um, reality TV is not new. It's not something that has just come out of the woodwork in the past year, or it's been around for since the '90s, basically. So we've all we all know what that is kind of about. The thing that is more worrying to me is the drug use, because I read somewhere that if this is true, and all of this is alleged, by the way, I don't know if it's true or if it's not true. I think that we should take. We should put that out there beforehand because I yes. do not need Andy Cohen coming to me and saying anything to me besides, here's a check. I only want a check from Andy Cohen. I don't want no problems. <laughs> but uh, I think I read somewhere that Andy would uh, take some of these things and uh, if, they, if the cocaine was being done with him, they would get better storylines. They would get better, uh, better edits. And that screams to me of coercion and that your job would be in jeopardy if you didn't do these things. So that is something that is more worrying to me. If it is true, all, again, all of this is alleged because I am not, I don't want the, I don't want no smoke from Andy Cohen. Thank you very much. Yeah. I mean, when you are, I'll, I, I'll never forget years ago, we did a TV pilot and we were shooting all day for a TV version of this show. And it was amazing. And we got some really good leads. It just ultimately never got picked up, which is fine. That's the nature of the game. But Jeremy and I, and this is predates you, Cody, but Jeremy and I, and we had a couple of other people on set and we were simulating a little bit of what we do just when we're recording here and we had champagne. And I remember not everybody, you have to remember if you are going to film and have alcohol, mm -hmm. not everyone responds well to alcohol. And when you sure. need, and you know, and if anybody knows anything about being on set, when you're on, you're on, it's like, wait, you know, hurry up and wait. And then when you're needed, it's like, turn it on. And we noticed a couple of people on set because we were having some champagne did not respond as well. And Jeremy and I decided if the show gets picked up, we will, if any, we might have like one glass, but that's it because yeah. not everyone's responding well to it. And we don't want, you know, you need to get the shot you need and time is money and that kind of thing. When you're blurring the, of entertainment and extracurriculars, and I'm just talking alcohol here. So it's yeah. like, I could see where things could get a little out of hand. This will play out. We will see what are the people saying before I move on to our next story. Wow. The people are saying a lot. Uh, Malibu says Andy needs to be more selective of who he does coke with. Uh, <laughs> I know, right? Pretty Princey says the New York housewives were such a mess. I remember seeing them at Nello on the Upper East Side. Um, uh, uh, somebody's having connection problems. I hope that they get that fixed. Come on now. And then Bryce says, I hope Andy is a good role model for his child. Wow. Well, we're not the kids. We're not bringing the kids up in here tonight. <laughs> Oops. 
<laughs> love it oh my goodness yes. okay <laughs> well let's move into celebrities within our own arena and i'm talking about gay porn and recently gay porn star max lord went viral and he was on a recent podcast one of our uh, sloppy seconds podcasts and he was made the claim and went viral after he claimed he eats McDonald's Big Macs and takes 10 anti-diarrhea pills, okay, Imodium, <laughs> right before bottoming. And it went viral because people were, many of his followers are also bottoms and know that you can't take 10 Imodium. No, what he may have just been cheeky and provocative which is where i'm thinking he went down the road but a lot of people had a lot to say it's like um Derek cage says please do not take 10 emodium at once follow the recommended daily dosage somebody else said ty santana said 10 emodium and two big macs sounds pretty cray uh two emodiums mark anthony said had me locked up and bloated for four days i can't imagine what 10 would do and you can imagine why people were going on and on because like my shirt says, even when I've been a pow or bottom is what my tank top <laughs> says. I got this on the cruise. Thank you so much. I was a power. I've been a power bottom and didn't need to take any emodium. Good and we've had Dr. Goldstein on the show before. And if you're eating a high fibrous diet, and you lightly clean out, you should be pretty good. Now, I think perhaps that he in question, the person that we are talking about, and I'm talking about, let me get his name, Max Lord, was actually just being cheeky and lighthearted. But it went viral, Cody. Do you believe him? Do you think he was putting the wrong messaging out? What are your thoughts? Are we just being too much? I think that if he wasn't joking, that sounds like bubble guts and he does not need to come anywhere near me. I'm not trying to get sprayed. I'm not trying to get painted on. Uh, I thought he was Felix Fox at first. So I was going to say how hot he was, but that's not the case. I was confused. It's just all that that Modium says is 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 a wild thing. It's just why would you do all of that? I, I have to ask you, what does the modium actually do? Does it like lock you up before you clean out? So okay, you can so buy them easier? Okay. I can't speak to the 10 Big Macs because I don't think I've had a McDonald's since I was <laughs> an adolescent. So okay. I can't speak to that. But emodium, why do some people take emodium before bottoming? It's because it's an anti-diarrhea pill. So it's really meant for if you were in the trenches of diarrhea, and sorry, hopefully no one's having dinner right now, but you know, <laughs> if you were, this it's not a panacea. It doesn't, it just helps you to kind of stop that for a minute. You would just take the recommended dosage and just give yourself a break for a minute. Some gay men have taken to taking it before they bottom, sometimes performers, just to give themselves that extra safety net, if you will. Okay. In other words, maybe they've done everything, maybe they've done, their, but they're going to be filming all day. So they've taken their fiber and they've cleaned out, but maybe they're on set all day. So it's been this little thing that people will take an emodium just to block that uh, from happening. It just, it basically constipates you though. So you can imagine okay. it's not the healthiest thing at yeah. all. It's just a thing that you could do as one more thing. I've asked Dr. Goldstein before. He says there's, it can be dangerous. You don't want to over. That's why I think Max putting that out there is I'm, thinking of it as a joke and people should think of it that way because it is not healthy. It's really not a healthy thing for you. You should really okay. be able to manage your, your gut, if you will, with a proper diet and a, a little cleaning and feel comfortable taking it. And I've certainly done that and been fine, like, you know, really fine. And so I, that's why I think he was being cheeky and I hope nobody takes that seriously. So is, does that answer your question or? It totally does. Thank you so much. And now I know how to be a better bottom. I, I'm learning from the power bottom. So thank you so much, Steve. Yeah, the power <laughs> bottom. 
<laughs> that was very well stated and i'm more informed now so thank you so much uh, yeah yeah and the comments are saying that it's a security blanket and it's it's uh emodium is such a godsend and it's the gatekeep secret <laughs> so it is it's just not you know the best thing i think yes. so Bryce is yeah. saying that uh, Maxwell Lord is being silly and got the extra yeah. attention that he wanted and constipation feels like hell. So uh, then Pretty Prince says, just use a shower shot. You'll be fine. So I, we got some professional bottoms. I think you should get more sh uh, shirts made about power bottom and then we should give them to all our guests tonight because I'm getting very good information from all of them tonight. Got it. Well, this was made, I think, by a DJ, but I'll have to get who made it. But I can't take credit for it, but I think it's pretty cool. And I'm, I'm going to take staying on being ready and let's switch gears here. I just want to shout out to our sponsor right now that we are currently working with. One of our sponsors, because we have a couple of them, but one of the ones that we're working with right now has been working well for me. And I'm talking about Joy Mode. And Joy Mode, in terms of being ready, so we were talking about being ready for, as a bottom, just being ready for being hard down there. Joy Mode, it really works. And here's the thing, you can take it 45 minutes up to four hours before you're gonna have sex. But what I really like, it's all about blood flow, Cody. And mm -hmm. blood flow can mean a lot of things. There's so many good things in here. The thing about uh, ED medication is you don't know what's in them and they can react to your internal organs and what's going on. If you're doing any extracurriculars, they can often not work well. This is all natural and it's all about blood wow. flow. And so I've been taking it even when I'm not going to have sex because it's oh. all about proper blood flow and can help with things like your blood pressure and reach your heart and help with your workout. So all it is is a little packet. You just put it in some water, six to eight ounces and take it. I've been taking it every day. And right now you can get 20% off and you can go to usejoymode.com forward slash tags or just go to usejoymode.com you'll get 20 percent off plus free shipping by using our code tags t-a-g-s t-a-g-s usejoymode.com this is such a great product i'm all about it i'm bringing it with me as i go to vegas and la this weekend and um and you know when you when you support our sponsors audience, you're supporting us because the better we right do there. with our sponsors, the more we will be able to keep going on. And so it's worth the 20% off just to try it. I stand by it, but know that when you support our sponsors, you're actually supporting tags podcast and it keeps us going on for hopefully another 10 years. So all the years support us. <laughs> <laughs> this is on um, all my social media. Check it out. Joy mode and get your 20% off. Okay. What's, so, what's the promo code one more time? The promo code is tags, T-A-G-S. You go to usejoymode.com forward slash tags and use our promo code. You get 20% off right off the bat and free shipping. So check that out. Can't okay. Wait. Well, in our ever quest to warn people, but we want everybody to be sex positive. If you happen to be in the Palm Springs area, police are issuing a warning about people fucking on a horse trail. So apparently there is this area in Palm Springs and it's a horse trail, but a lot of people have been using it for scenes. I can only imagine, I would love to do it as well. Well. The Palm Springs Police Department is addressing community reports of lewd conduct in public occurring in the vicinity of Bud Fur Equestrian Trail area on the 900 block of South El Cielo Road. And they've been alerted to multiple instances of inappropriate behavior in public spaces, which basically undermines the ability of all people to just enjoy the area. I'm here for it, but it is for tourism and all. And just beware if you happen to be in that area. It does bring up a lot of questions and concerns, Cody, because I am a big fan of outdoor sex and I love watching it. But I think 
you know, you always have to be kind of aware of that. You don't want to get caught either. And if there's, I, we say this really to alert and warn because we don't want you, if you're just having fun, if you have an OnlyFans, I have an OnlyFans right now and I would be like, hey, this would be great content, but we don't want any of our crew to get, you know, be under fire for this. So what are yeah. your thoughts when you hear this? Oh yeah, I definitely agree with you. I, and they actually should not have posted that all these, this kerfuffle was going on out there because now I want to go and try it more. I want to go out there. I want to have the public sex, but I do want to be safe and considerate to all the people that are on the trail. So I think that that is the point here. I think that anybody wanting to do this should be a little bit more discreet about it. Maybe yeah. this is a more blowjob friendly trail more so than full on anal i feel like you can just pretend like you're tying somebody's shoe and you know be sucking a dick at the same time because i think that's the way to go and just be aware of your surroundings if somebody is coming up behind you just make sure that you stop and you take take a second to know what's going on around you i know it's difficult in the throes of passion but so is jail jail is difficult too so <laughs> thank you my goodness yeah exactly <laughs> Good points and just, you know, look out for yourself, but there's plenty of places that you can have fun and film content. I myself am including myself in that mix, but we don't want you to get caught. And if there's exactly. a warning out there, that means they're on the lookout. Let's not get caught for something that we don't need to since we have the information. Okay, well, there is, we've talked about it before, but it's come up again in recent Reddit discussions and it's called the free use fetish what is free use cody well it's the essential idea that if you were in a relationship you could use this card almost like your get out free card or and it's free use to have sex with your boyfriend or your partner if you will and you can work out any of those parameters that you want to so let's just say we were talking in our meeting that if you were, if one of us was in a relationship, let's just say something traumatic happened in our work or our life mm -hmm. that I would say, okay, do not use your free use card to have sex with me. If you know that I'm in the middle of a crisis, or if you know, I'm in the middle of a tragedy that happened, or I'm in the middle of a work thing. Or somebody okay. even said it could be as simple as I'm cooking dinner. Do not come, like, don't let me burn the dinner. <laughs> don't use your free use card then. But a lot of it can be as simple as, you know, maybe the person's asleep and you nudge them and you just give them permission to enter you or to that have sounds sex. like a destiny's child song i don't know about you i don't know <laughs> i don't know any of their songs so i don't know <laughs> what you're talking about i'm coming over your house on i Friday. barely know the group but... i'm gonna give you all a full lesson on destiny's child okay? do they predate janet or madonna <laughs> or lisa or vanessa i don't know i don't but... think so i don't think okay, so I don't <laughs> Anyways, staying on topic, I just think, um, you know, I think this is kind of a good thing, a healthy thing. If you, you know, I think if you were really intimate with your partner, you could have some really good discussions with this. And I think it could escalate your relationship if you had those parameters already built in. Now, I also feel like you can have a couple of, you know, joker cards where even if they were in the parameters and somebody was like, you could be like, you know, baby, I'm pulling out one of my cards because I just, I just can't, I can't tonight, <laughs> but, but I will make it up to you. I promise, but it could keep the spice going. What are your thoughts on this? Well, okay. Is it really? I, <laughs> <laughs> it's not quite that. However, I do feel like, this takes away a bit of the autonomy of the other person. So I do, I don't necessarily vibe with this. I understand it is an agreed upon uh, contract between the partners and there are parameters 
that would have to be very specific and strict for me personally to feel comfortable. But I don't see how these parameters in place would be any different than what I do now. I feel like if I go to my partner and say, hey, let's have some sex, that they would be so uh, reluctant to actually go out and have sex with me. I feel like this is something that I... I if we, the two people that are into each other, that this would not be an issue. I don't. I don't know. Maybe it's just me and the and the the relationships that I have been in. But even if they need a little bit of convincing, I think that convincing is very hot for for me personally. I feel like that might actually be my king, being able to convince somebody to that is not necessarily into having sex, maybe turning them on and making them feel sexy. And then they would be, get more and more and more into having sex with me because I'm very good at it. So maybe that is why I find that to be a little bit more enticing for me than this. Well, than we'll just have to take your word for that. But <laughs> <laughs> if you're special, you can experience it, honey. Okay. <laughs> where, where I like it, where it could be, I know you, we were talking in our meeting where you were saying, well, it could get a little dicey because not from a intercourse standpoint, maybe not everyone's ready, but it could also be from a BDSM standpoint where you could be certain into certain fetishes where yeah. like, for example, I'm into feet and I could like, if all you had to do was just kind of lay there and let me like worship your feet, what do you care? And I've been with somebody that I'm currently, I hang out with here and there. And he <laughs> is sometimes a couple of times he's been cheeky with me. And he's like, no, just come over here. Like, you're not going to work. You like go to my feet. And I'm like, no, but I want to. And he's like, no, I just want you to come over here right now. And we have that little dance. And ultimately, sometimes he lets me and it's it's this whole thing. But so I think for those hey, kinds of things, you're down for the chase, too. I feel like, yeah, I think it could be fun. <laughs> Um, I, I do think I probably wouldn't enact some of these r rules and because I think it's not so organic and, yes. you know, but maybe this could be a therapy thing. If we were having issues, yeah, then I could see that. maybe we could enact that and maybe it would push somebody to realize, wow, ultimately that was kind of hot. The takeaway, the other side of it could be that. Mm, I felt violated and we need to break up is so it could go either way. I think I could not agree yeah. more. I think that it's a very fine line between somebody feeling, I don't want to say abused, but that's the word that is coming to me. So I'm going to say it. I feel like it, this is something that could be, that could go wrong very quickly. So I think that for me personally, this is not something that I'm going to be into, but I understand how it could be a kink for other people. And I do see the value in it for someone or couples that are going through a little bit of a, a relationship or sexual dr desert or dry spell. So yeah, I think that this is, it could be good in certain circumstances. Got it. Well, let's stay on sexuality. And there was a recent article in the Gay Times that was talking and bringing attention to the fray sexuality. And it is a part of the asexuality orientation. It's, it's all about sexual orientation. And it's essentially says fray sexuals are people that are sexually attracted to strangers or people they don't know very well. And in most situations, the, the more a fray sexual gets to know a person, the less sexually desirable that person will become for them. So the degree to which this happens will vary by person to person. Fray sexual, like I said, is a part of the asexual spectrum. And contrary to what a lot of people think, it isn't because they don't experience sexual attraction. Rather, they experience sexual attraction in a very specific way. And a lot of people think that they're commitment phobic Cody, but they're actually not because many of them, and they did a whole deep dive. It's a really great story. I'll post it on tagspodcast.com. But one of the things that they said is a lot of fray sexuals want to be in relationships, 
but they are in non-monogamous relationships. So in other words, they right. love their partner so much. And I feel like I've seen a lot of this throughout the years where you you know you've been around a couple before and you know they're not having sex <laughs> and <laughs> at all. But you also, but without being so, you know, cheeky. Close-minded, okay. They are, you also know that they are in love and yeah. they have a love bond that isn't going to break anytime soon. And I've been around these oh, types wow. of couples before where they just love each other. Now, whether they were phrase sexual or not, I don't know, but it is an actual thing. It's giving voice to this actual sexual community. It's not about relationships. It's about a sexuality. And why we want to talk about it is because we're a sexuality podcast. Um, it isn't for me because the ones that I don't have this phrase sexuality, because the more I get to know somebody that I'm really into, the more I often want to have more intimate sex. But on mm -hmm. the other hand, I've been around people before that, yeah, I mean, I can just have a lot of sex with different people and I can find people interesting and it can really kind of end there. Frey sexuals actually can be in a relationship, a loving relationship, but the more they get to know their partner, the more they are not sexually attracted to them. Does that make sense? And what do you it think? It does. You know what? Just you talking just now made me think, oh my God, have I been in a free sexual relationship before? <laughs> and I didn't even know. <laughs> it's, it's it's more really... of like a sexuality thing, but maybe, but I don't know. You tell me. Yeah, it's really enlightening to hear that this is something that uh, some people have to go through. I've never experienced it because again, like you, I'm the type of person that when I get to know somebody, I want to have sex with them more and more and more. And the orgasm with somebody that you were connected to is so much greater for me. But I'm thinking back to previous relationships that I've had. And I think that it may be something that I've gone through before. And maybe it was something that was undiagnosed with them because it felt like the the closer that we got, the more the sexual part aspect of our relationship kind of lessened. So I think that it, it's something that we should take into account and it's something that we should be more cognizant of as a as a, a society because these people do exist and they deserve to be reflected on and 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 really taken into account as far as their their sexuality being valid. So it's just validating for them as 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 a community and I think that this is something that I'm going to be looking out for. In, in future endeavors and romantic endeavors, especially. Yeah, absolutely. And I think you hit it, hit the nail on the head when you said that it's just another part of our sexuality that we want to really showcase and give validity to because, you know, we're not all the same. We don't all want the same things. And yeah. this is just another, this would be good to give license to the fray sexual community because they are valid and maybe you would you would find yourself in the same boat and but you would need to know that and so yeah. and it's we're not trying to stigmatize one group or not it would give like let's just say you fell in love with somebody but you weren't of the phrase sexuality but mm -hmm. you love this person well maybe you would then consider an open relationship as an example for because you really did love this person and they loved you but you knew that you might not be able to continue to have intimate sex with them going forward because they're going to lose more sexual interest in you but you love them mm -hmm. that could open up a whole window for you or also can i pause it. you for two seconds because i think that for me personally the sex may not be something that they are interested in, but I feel like the intimacy is something that they they could be totally interested in because uh, I feel like with this previous previous person, I, uh, cuddling was completely on the table, kissing and, and being affectionate was totally on the table. I feel like there is a myriad of things that we could have done besides sex that was, was, wasn't 
out of bounds for them because I feel like sex was the the boundary. So I right. think that that is something that's completely valid. And thank you for making that separation because intimacy isn't sex necessarily. It can mm -hmm. be, but it isn't. And that's a great difference that you just made there. So absolutely. And that's our goal here on this show. And I'm glad it's come up. Uh, okay. So much to talk about. We could talk about so many things, but the gays recently on a Reddit thread were talking about the sluttiest outfit a man can wear. <laughs> I just came off the Bacayo cruise and I had a lot of them. And it's a question that we all are often wondering, is it slutty or is it just part of our community? And the answers range from tight sweatpants while going commando to a smile. But a few of the commenters got even deeper in the conversation pointing out the thinking behind the different types of slutty outfits. And some of them said things like, is this, if it's showing a body part, then that it can be slutty and sexual. Others agreed painting out the essential sex sexiness of a man wearing overalls and aprons with nothing underneath, or even walking around the house in a jock strap. And another poster was partial to club wear. Things like mesh shirts that I'm going to wear to this Hold on. Madonna concert. <laughs> um, fishnets, get me rock hard, somebody else said. And another praised the horniness of certain headwear. Asking, why does the backwards ball cap do what it does? It's so hot. I mean, there's a lot to unpack here. I think our community, oh, okay, I just came back to the camera and saw, <laughs> you know, I'm wearing somewhat of a clubby tee and continue to, uh, over the cruise, I found these shorts that are, they're brilliant because they're shorts with pockets in the front and in the back, the ass is cut out, but they've got the straps, like you're wearing a jock strap. So it shows your ass. And yeah. what a perfect like short to wear. Um, I don't know. I think our community has always embraced the, if you want to call it slutty, provocative. I think sometimes we are free. We're open. If you go back to the seventies, you know, we've always, it's been a part of our community to be loud, proud, open and everything in between. I'm here for it. What are your thoughts on that? Oh, no, I love it. I think that all the outfits that they described are things that I actually are in my closet right now and that I would wear in a heartbeat because I am, I don't know, I feel like I am the type of person and for my upbringing and just being who I am as a Latin person, as a, as a, um, a homosexual a gay man. <laughs> I feel like all of these things have been ingrained in me. I feel like being sexy for me is something that I want to evoke to all of the people all of the time. So it's these outfits are definitely some things that I have definitely put into my everyday repertoire. I'm wearing a cutoff t-shirt right now. I want to show all the body parts all the time. And I think that the sluttiest outfit a man could wear you know those stringer tees that they have? Ooh, yeah. That show all of the muscles and short shorts. I cut a, my stringer tee to be a crop top too. So I'm even showing a, even more skin than usual. So I do all the things and I think that is, is the best outfit to wear. Listen, we're all very blessed to be in a community that when we are within our community, I was just on the Vakaya Caribbean cruise. Mm -hmm with costume party after costume party. And I'll never forget my friend took the, the last night off and I went by myself and I had a very like slutty, not slutty, but because people claim that word provocative. Exactly. And I was just twirling and spinning and making my way around the crowd, around the cruise ship having the best time of my life and people were like oh my gosh look at what you're wearing and even my straight trainer commented on the post that I put is like are you getting bigger than me and it was just Ooh. you know it was it was flattering it felt good but it also felt very freeing to be in our community and it's very beautiful that when you are in our LGBTQ plus community, 
you feel safe and you feel free to be you. And yeah. a lot of ours has a history of just like accepting ourselves and sometimes it's our bodies and it's beautiful and i i'm here for it so yes that's Ooh, right yeah. just because you dress provocatively does not mean you're slutty and what even the hell is a slut right now anyway because Thank you're you. doing you and you're exploring your sexuality so be proud exactly and uh we wanted to give some advice on a recent reddit thread and i think we have time and it's what's up with the guys who don't give compliments when dating I'm sure we some going of you here? have gone through this. <laughs> in my, the person wrote, in my recent dating experiences, two in particular that I'm thinking about, I've noticed how little the guys gave me any compliments. Even though we went on multiple dates, hooked up, and maintained regular contact, I was thrown off by how reserved they were with compliments when it came to me. I noticed in both cases they didn't hesitate about calling other guys hot in front of me, mainly a celebrity or someone on IG or something of that sort. In those instances, I decided to withhold compliments about them myself, even if I had given them prior to that. Okay, any thoughts about this? Is this something guys do intentionally, even if they show interest in other ways? And you and I had a long conversation in our meeting about this because it hit a chord and I admitted to you, which I will admit to you collectively, is that I have grown so much in this area. So I had a boyfriend when I first moved to New York about 15 years ago, and I'll never forget, he actually would compliment me, but I'll never forget, we were watching Ugly Betty, if that gives you any reference of time, and Adam Rodriguez showed up on the screen, and he was like, oh my God, Adam Rodriguez is so hot. Well, I was triggered and jealous, and I'm like, what do you mean? you don't think I, do you think Adam Rodriguez is hotter than me? And he is. And the answer to it all. No, like, he's not. <laughs> well, whatever. But the point being is if that conversation were happening today, I would be like, I am so into him too. Or even if I wasn't into the person that my boy was talking about, I would be like, oh, okay, awesome. But I would also feel comfortable freely talking about who I might thought was hot as well. But in our meeting, the difference that you said was mm -hmm. I was also getting compliments because this boyfriend, we went to a Kelly Rowland show at, at Ascension, which we were talking about. You love about. Kelly Rowland. <laughs> like now she's like on my list. And he would compliment me all the time. So so where this person saying like he's not getting compliments, I was insecure at the time. Now I'm so glad I've evolved out of that because it's so much well, extra how old were layer. You? How old were you at the I time? mean, so fifteen, so I'm fifteen. It was like thir late thirties, old enough. Okay. I just think yeah. I was. I'm a little bit of a late bloomer, but I've bloomed. And Me too. I'm over, yeah. So yeah. What are your thoughts? Yeah. No, I definitely agree with you. I think that it's a balancing act, and we did talk about this during our meeting extensively. We, we were like picking at yeah. each other's brains. It was so funny. Um, but I do think it's a balance because if you are complimenting your significant other, then I don't think that the jealousy will be as much, at least not for me. I think that when you compliment someone and then all you, he all your, uh, all you hear is the person that is your uh, romantic partner is complimenting someone else and you don't actually get those compliments for yourself, then it starts to make you feel a little bit insecure about whether or not they think you're attractive. They think that you are, uh, they see you as a sexual uh, being and they, they recognize your sensual sexuality. I think that that is something that could really weigh on you. So I definitely see what they're saying. And I think that it's something that people should take into consideration because you know, we're human beings. We need love. We need to be told that we're beautiful. These are all things that we, we need as humans. So I think that you, as long as you are doing the balancing act of complimenting your partner, as well as expressing your visual appreciation of other people, then I think that sh it should all work out. But you bring up such be great points of the balance of it all, because you don't want to be in a silo where you just say, oh my gosh, baby, you're the prince, the 
adoration of my dreams. Of course, we, you and I both would. I mean, I am. <laughs> but... I, know both, I know both of us. We would want that all the time. But well, I, think I mean, that we are realistic enough. It would be weird. And so I used to be that way, and I've grown to be like, yeah, and I feel comfortable telling you who I think is hot, but I'm ultimately with you and I have a connection, like our minds can actually be layered and we can get less blocked with our insecurity and our jealousies if the more we grow and we mm -hmm. learn that it's like layers and layers and it's like you could see your mind just opening up and it becomes yeah. more, and you also just release all that pressure of, oh my gosh, like I have to be the only one. And if I'm not, it's just, it's impossible. And so yeah, it's a lot. I just think, yeah. And so I feel for this person, if you're not getting any love, then it's time to look elsewhere and move on is our or, recommendation or have a conversation yes. and say, well, you like Adam Rodriguez or whomever. It's like, you know, you need to show some love over here if you want to, but if you don't want to, then fine. You know? Yeah. Yeah, I totally agree with that. So I, I think it could boil down to a conversation and that's all that needs to happen. And as soon as you, if your partner is not willing to give you that adoration, then you definitely don't need to be with them. Well stated. And lastly, we love to end our show when straight up gay porn does thirst trap. And this week they're asking the questions, which of these 19 gay porn stars took the best photo of the week? And it was a good week of photos. There were so many. I posted on tagspodcast.com, but it's our job on a audio podcast, because most of you will listen to this, to describe why we liked the picture that we picked. And I voted earlier. Coming in number two for me was a couple, Alex Rosso and Cal Cobra, who uh -oh. are literally standing looking down at the camera with beautiful tattoos and one is laying his hard cock as a base and the other one is laying his equally hard cock on top of both of their uncut cocks. It's oh, a wow. visual you do not want to miss and it's it gives me Cirque du Soleil and all they're doing <laughs> is showing their cocks, but hey, I'm here for it. I would watch that Cirque du Soleil show. Cirque du Soleil. I'm just saying. But my vote goes to Lucas Moren, who is sh sitting back with two pillows propped up, a cap. He's got a great beard, a nose ring, and he is showing his nice, sexy, hairy ass and his thick ass cock with the black dildo going in him. And I went ahead and looked at his Twitter account and I am all here for it. He's currently in number two, just if you had any interest in that as I voted, but Lucas gets my vote. And of course, damn it, he's from Barcelona. So not gonna see Ooh. him anytime soon, but yeah. We can go to Barcelona. People are, people are saying that uh, Cow Cobra just got a new follower and Malibu says that Derek Shaw uh, gets his vote. Bruce Bryce says that number one, Cam Steele, and number two, Matthew Ellis for me. Who do you vote for and why? Well, Bryce took my two. Now, so I have to go somewhere else. Uh, uh, first of all, Matthew Ellis is my porn crush. He is absolutely beautiful, but the picture is not all of that. And Cam Steele is stunning. But again, the picture is not that great personally for me, but my vote this week is going to Damian Knight and Elijah Zane. It's got everything you possibly mm. want in a thirst trap, a huge cock, a delicious ass, and of course, pearls. You know, I love me a, a nice pearl necklace. <laughs> they are lying on a bed completely naked, except for Elijah has those pearls I was talking about. And Damian is leaning over Elijah with his ass in the air. And Elijah has, uh, he's leaned back with a rock hard cock showing. Uh, they're looking at each other intently and passionately, and it looks like a dick is about to get hopped on. So I can not go wrong with this picture. I think it's amazing, and they get my vote for the week. 
Yeah. Love it, love it, love it. And we are out of time. We want to thank everybody for watching us live. And I will be in Vegas this weekend to see Madonna Ooh. Saturday night. Anybody going, reach out to me on my Instagram. And I'll be in Los Angeles for a week and a half. So reach out to me there if you want to meet up. Uh, my Instagram is I am underscore Steve V. I also have an OnlyFans. I will be shooting while I'm there as well. It's OnlyFans.com forward slash Steve. No, OnlyFans.com forward slash Sexy Poppy Steve V. Don't forget about our sponsor, Joy Mode. Go to usejoymode.com forward slash tags. Use our promo code tags for 20% off and free shipping. Follow Cody. He's a life coach at KMD Coaching on Instagram or his personal account for some sexy, delicious photos at Mr. Maurice. Mr. Maurice, don't forget that H. And in the meantime, continue, Cody, having hot, hot, gay, gay sex. sex. Lovely. Lovely. Oh, I don't mind.